The Your Safe Space podcast is recorded on Wurundjeri land. This podcast acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the land. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Your Safe Space, the podcast. I'm your host, Adele Marie, and this podcast is here for you. It is a safe space for us to catch up each week to discuss anything and everything. And on today's show, we are talking all things manifesting. Hi, guys. How are you going? How has your week been? I'm just moving the chair around because I feel like the angle is off. Not a very professional production in here, but anyway, how are you going? I hope you've had a good week. What's going on in your world? If you have had a rough week, I just want to say I love you. I'm thinking of you. It's a new week tomorrow. We can start again. I had a rough week last week, but I'm feeling better this week. And so I blame my hormones for that. But onwards and upwards, I am back recording on Tuesday. I did like recording on Thursday, but it's just honestly impossible for me to do because it doesn't leave me enough time to get the content up and loaded in the platform. Platforms. And so Tuesday earlier in the week is better for me. And so here I am on Tuesday recording this. I hope that the rest of my week is good after this. It's always funny recording a couple of days before it goes live. Let's get into our highlights, gratitudes and struggles. I want you guys to hold space for yours while I give you mine. And then I want you to come into the Facebook group to share yours because every Monday we actually put a post up in the group where you guys can share yours. And I love reading them. Like I nearly cried over one of the responses yesterday. It was a beautiful photo of a listener and her husband. It was his birthday. She had organized a surprise party for him and oh there was just a lot of love in that comment and it really just made my day. So please come in group and do that. For me, my highlight, guys, I'm giving you a little update. My journal is nearly ready. Well, it's nearly ready for production. I've gone back and forth on the design a few times. If I'm completely honest, the design has changed so much and I'm glad it has because I'm pretty much designing every single page. Not in the sense that like every single page is heavily different, but there is elements of change throughout the journal and oh my God, it is fucking beautiful. If I can say so myself. I can't give you a timeline. We are just waiting for, I guess, final design. So not yet with the supplier, not yet with production, but it's happening. There's also another secret project, which I can't tell you any more information about, but I think that will come before the journal. So hopefully I'll be able to tell you about that soon. I signed the contract for that last week. So I'm working on some other amazing stuff for you. And I don't know if you just heard my stomach rumble, but if you did, I'm so sorry. It's nearly lunchtime and I'm really hungry. But my struggle has actually been this podcast, <laughs> if I'm honest, because I've had some severe audio issues. You guys would have heard me cut into a couple of episodes recently with some pre-recorded chunks at home. And I fucking hate it because it sounds like I'm underwater or it sounds like I'm in an elevator and I'm calling you from like a Nokia 3315. It's just not good enough. And so I'm trying to sort it out, but I do appreciate your patience. I can't give you any other updates right now, but I'm working on it. Just know that I'm working on it. The podcast audio and the quality of the audio is top priority for me. I'm very pedantic about the quality of the audio for you guys because I don't usually have audio issues and I pride myself on delivering top quality content. So we will get on top of it, I promise. And then my gratitude goes to my darling Franklin. Not that he will ever listen to this podcast or he'll ever understand. And I tell him every day how much I love him, but he has just been an absolute angel. He's doing this new thing where he unmakes my bed. I make it in the morning and then he decides to unmake it and get into it. It's so cute. I can't even get mad at him. I do have a ramp on my bed for him. And when I leave the house, I leave him with access to the house including my bedroom. He doesn't destroy anything. Like I can trust him with that, except now he's learned how to undo my bed. And I don't know how, because he's very small and the pillows are very heavy. So (laughs) he fully moves them. I really want to set up a camera so I can catch him in the act. So I need to sort that out because I want to see what, how the fuck he does it. Anyway, let's get into today's episode. We are talking all things manifestation. I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you how I started dabbling in it. I'm going to tell you my personal steps, and I'm going to give you some examples of the best manifestations I've had. And then I'm going to jump into some listener questions. It's a juicy app and I don't want to waste any time. So let's get into it. Starting with what is manifestation? So I love to start with a definition and manifestation is a way to bring your goals or wants or desires into reality. A more simpler way to look at it is to put intention behind or intention towards something that you want or you hope to happen. And for me, it's taking an active approach in creating your life or it's taking an active approach in taking action to do the things you want to do. There are many styles and ways to 
manifest, guys. I just want to say that at the start of this episode. I believe that in a way they're all probably right. I just wanted to mention that because you might listen to this and be like, oh, that's not how I do it or that's not how so-and-so said it. I'm not here to shit on how anyone else does it. This is what has worked for me. I'm also a science-based girly, so I'm going to give you the science behind it as well. And I've spoken about this, I think, in episode 31, Lucky Girl Syndrome. Go listen to that as well if you like this episode. But the science behind it has been a large part of it for me. And a large part of that manifesting or getting what you want in life comes down to growth or abundance mindset. Now, I will do a separate episode on growth mindset versus scarcity mindset. Today is just about manifesting, but there is research done by a psychologist. Her name is Dr. Carol Dweck that shows if you believe you can do something, it makes it more likely that you will actually successfully do it. And this is exactly in line with what is known as the law of attraction. So law of attraction is a style of manifesting where your belief is enough to bring about manifestation. It is essentially like attracting like. So if you have positive thoughts, you will attract positive things into your life. That is essentially what law of attraction is. We then have this thing called self-fulfilling prophecies. Research also shows that our expectations, whether they are positive or negative, tend to then be confirmed, which I think is so fucking fascinating. This is what is known as self-fulfilling prophecy in psychology. So if we expect to bring our idea to life, or if we expect to succeed a goal, or if we expect to reach whatever it is that we want, we are actually more likely to do it. I want to give you an example. So say that you want to apply for a job or there's this role that you really want at work. It's your dream job. But deep down, you don't actually believe that you will succeed with it and you don't think that you will get that. Subconsciously, what you will do is behave in a way that will make it more likely that you won't get that. You might not even realize this happening because it is at such a subconscious level, but it may be that you're having negative self-talk ahead of the interview or you spend too much time stressing out you actually don't prepare and you sabotage yourself. Another example is dating where you think there is no one for you or you think there are no dates, but then you subconsciously fulfill that belief by either turning down dates or closing yourself off. And so that's another example of how that self-fulfilling prophecy plays out. And then the other science element is negativity bias or bias in general. So this is where someone has perceptions about manifestation. And again, research shows if we are feeling bad, if we're not having a good one, we're actually more likely to see neutral circumstances in a negative way. The same way that somebody with a more positive attitude will pay more attention to the good things in their life or the ways in which they have successfully manifested things. Someone with a more negative outlook may experience the exact same things, but only see where they have failed or only see the bad parts or only see when they haven't succeeded. So bias does also play a part in manifesting. And then lastly, we have the upward spiral of positive emotion. Now, you guys might remember this. I spoke about it in the Lucky Girl Syndrome. It is the science research done by Dr. Barbara Fredrickson, and it's her theory called the broaden and build theory, which is about emotion. So she says that when we experience a positive emotion like joy or love or gratitude, it sends our little brain into a positive upward spiral. We then search and seek out other resources in life to feel more positive, and then we take note of the other good things in our life. And that is related to the law of assumption, which again is another manifesting style. Different to the law of attraction though. And so with law of assumption, that is really what you assume to be true will eventually happen. So you believe it and it's going to happen. So again, that difference there, law of assumption differs from law of attraction because law of assumption says you just need to believe it to be true. While law of attraction tells you you need to be positive to bring that positivity back into your life. Now, before I get into anything else in the show, I need to also say privilege does absolutely play a part in manifestation and it would be naive of me and silly of me not to mention that. So like I said in Lucky Girl Syndrome, I believe everybody can work on their mindset. I believe everybody can take action in certain things, but there are also some of us in life who, for whatever reason, have experienced hardships from their socioeconomic, their gender, their race, their sexuality, and they may have to work a lot harder than the average person. So I just wanted to note that. And I also want to note that there are still negative emotions in life. There are still negative things that happen. I will never ever come on this podcast and preach toxic positivity for you. I think maybe that is why I lean so heavily into the science behind it. I really would rather you guys feel your emotions, even the fucking shit ones, and learn how to process them than just being like, oh no, I've got to be positive because I've got to manifest my life. We don't fucking do that here, okay? I want you guys to still feel the shitty stuff. I want you to process them and then move to other positive mindsets after you have done that. So these are like tools in a toolkit 
to like navigate life and help you build out the life that you want. We don't want to sit in them 24 seven and make that our whole personality. Balance guys, balance. Now, how I got started. I got started with The Secret. I don't know if you guys remember this. It was quite popular when I was a kid. I think I was in my teens and I think my mum actually bought it and then I read it. And The Secret for me is very much law of attraction. And I remember one of the activities in The Secret was to write out a check with like the amount of money that you wanted to manifest. And I think I wanted to write down like $100,000 or something. I didn't get $100,000 obviously, but I was very young. I didn't understand the other stuff behind it. That was really when I first dabbled into it. Since then, I think I've dabbled in and out of it throughout my life. And I feel like, especially since I've been in therapy, I've taken a more conscious approach and a more active approach in living with intention. And I think that's even like one of the main goals with this podcast. I want to encourage you guys to live with intention. And through that, I feel like I've obviously attracted some certain things and I've manifested some certain things. And I'll also say gratitude plays a large part in that as well. And that goes back to that science element where if I'm grateful for all these things, and I'm naturally a very grateful person, I typically practice gratitude every single day. And because of that, I feel like my mind always then seeks out the good stuff. But one overarching thing that I've learned in my 29 years of living, especially in my 20s, is that manifestation, while sometimes it has that like woo-woo and that negative connotation, all it is is aligned action and it requires effort, energy, and intention. And for me, it's just like the fancy name that they've put on working towards your goals or the fancy name they've put on working hard for something that you want. The other element to it is, for me, manifestation is making decisions from future me for current me. And there are other examples I'll give to you in a second. I always try, especially when I'm making decisions, regardless of what area of my life I'm trying to make a decision, but I always try to think, how will future Adele, what would future Adele do? Because current Adele, she just knows what she knows right now, but future Adele is living in that life that I want or living in achieving these things that I want. What would she do? And so that's also how I make some of my decisions in life too. But I'm going to give you my tips, guys. As I said, there's many ways to manifest. This is just what works for me. If you want to give it a go, do it. I hope that you do. And I hope that you have some success with it. Tip number one is to get super clear on what you want. If you regularly journal or you've done any of the other activities I've given you in this podcast, then this should be quite an easy task. For some of you, you may have to work a little bit harder to get clear on what you want, but really it is looking at the areas of your life, sitting with it, either journaling, or maybe you even want to chat about it to a friend or a trusted person in your life and think about the end goal. Think about end vision. Think about all the elements, work, career, relationship, money, friendships, personal development. Maybe it's education. Maybe it's fun. Think about end goal. What does that life look like? What do you look like in that life? Think about end goal. And while you're thinking about it, I want you to ask yourself, what kind of feelings are you feeling when you imagine this? Would achieving this make you really happy? Would achieving this make you feel fulfilled? And I also want you to ask yourself, is this what you truly want? Because I see this happen. A lot of the times people might try to manifest what other people want. You need to actually manifest what you want. It needs to be for you. And then my tip number two is you need to clear your limiting beliefs. I think I'll do another podcast episode on this, but the limiting beliefs are the beliefs that you have that tell you you can't have these things. So when you think about this end goal or when you do step one, some of us might have a little voice in our head that's saying, no, you can't actually have that. No, you won't get that because of X, Y, Z. I want you to write down all of those limiting beliefs, write them down. And then what I want you to do is rewrite those in a way so that we can replace the limiting belief with a belief that you believe in. Now, I have some core beliefs that I'm going to share with you. And this is what I use to replace my own limiting beliefs. Number one, I'm always on the right path. You guys probably would have heard me talk about that in the lucky girl syndrome as well. Number two, I'm always attracting abundance. Number three, life is happening for me, not to me. I love that one. Number four, there is no limit to what I can accomplish in life. No limit. The sky's the limit, guys. And then the last one, there is no wrong decision that I can make. And I genuinely fucking believe these guys. Some of you might listen to that and be like, but how? It doesn't make sense. Again, it's taken me practice. It's taken me time to relearn these new beliefs. And the reason I actually think this step is the most important is because mindset really is everything. Your mindset impacts your actions. Your thoughts also impact your emotions and your actions. So I think if we start with the mindset and we clear away that self 
self-doubt, that negative self-talk, then we are on the right path. With this step, it can take time, like I said. You can't just learn overnight to stop talking to yourself like that or having that negative self-talk. And so go easy on yourself, be patient. The first thing I always like to do is just be aware of it. And so as I said, when you do step one, take note of whatever comes up in that tone or in that critic or in that doubtful voice that says that you can't have all these things for whatever reason. My tip number three is to think about the path and visualize the outcome. Again, working backwards, this is my hack, where you work backwards. There are little steps along the way that someone can take to get the thing that they want, regardless of what that is. So think about the path, think about the end goal, sit in that feeling. You can do lots of like manifestation meditations as well. There's some really great ones on YouTube. I will record some for you as well. I'm just waiting for Sam to get back so I can sort out everything else, guys. I want you to do this so that you can kind of see the pathway. And so you can also just feel what it would be like to have that and feel that same emotion. Again, we're trying to tap into that little positive upward spiral. And while you are doing this, I want you to still remain open to surprises and life surprising you or making it happen in another way. Ideally, guys, what I would love for you to do is like do this exercise in a journal and then just like park it and continue living your life. But I'll get to the end of the activity and then I'll, I'll give you next steps. So tip number four is to take inspired action. And this is, I'm going to say after the limiting beliefs, this is the best, this is the next best step because this is what you can actually do right now to align your choices with your desires. A lot of us, what we'll do in step one is figure out, hey, this is where I am now. This is where I want to be. In step three, we figure out this is how I get from step one. This is how I get from current to future place. And in step four, we actually take that inspired action. And again, like I say with everything, one thing at a time, 1% in the right direction every day will add up quicker, will add up better than trying to do changing all these elements of your life overnight. No, one thing at a time, guys, but seeing what actions you can take in each of those areas to get you closer there every day. And I'll give you an example. Maybe it is you don't like the current job that you're in. Maybe for you, you've got your dream job in mind, but the pathway seems really overwhelming. And so what I would do in that circumstance is I would think, okay, how can I come up with a list of inspired action? Maybe I need to research the industry. Maybe I need to connect with like-minded individuals on LinkedIn or in that field. Maybe I need to find a mentor in this industry. Maybe I then need to scrub up my CV or maybe I even invest like and have someone help me out with the CV so I get it to that next level. And then I go and apply for jobs. So already there, there's like six actions there that someone could do for a task in relation to a job. Again, I'll give the other example of dating. And this is why I'm back on dating apps is because my end goal is to get a boyfriend, to get a husband, (laughs) to have a partner in this thing that we call life. And what I was doing last year, I was just sitting at home saying, oh, I want this. Why is no one loving me? Why am I not? Why am I not getting it? And it's because I wasn't even putting myself out there. And so for me, what that inspired action looks like is going on dating apps. It is accepting dates. It's physically going on dates. It's replying back to my texts to these guys. It is actually showing up like I want what I really want. There are so many different things that we want. We all will want different things as well. I can't give you a hundred examples, but figuring out little tasks or steps you can take in the right direction and then start doing them and just do one thing at a time so you don't overwhelm yourself please. And then my last step in my little manifestation tactic (laughs) is to trust and release it and just live and let it go. And I know that might sound, what the fuck Adele, that doesn't make sense, but it does guys, because what this looks like is knowing firstly that you're taking inspired action every day and then relaxing. It's letting it go. It's not dwelling of it every morning, getting up, looking at your manifestations and being like, oh my God, they're not happening yet. You need to just have peace around it and know in your core and know in your gut that, hey, if I'm showing up and I'm actually taking the right action and I am making decisions from future me for current me and I'm doing my best, then that is enough. And that is how I find peace in this whole manifestation thing because it can be a slippery slope, guys. And I'll get to a listener question on this, but you really want to just balance it and still live your life. Like it's a mindset that sits in your subconscious. And for me, I would usually do like manifestation journaling maybe around like the end of a month 
month or I usually typically do it at the end of a year, at the at the start of a new year or even mid-year just to check in. I am pretty good at rain checking my behavior and rain checking my habits and rain checking my action. And I'll give you a great example. With this podcast, I've been having issues with the recording. And so for me, in the last week, I've realized, fuck, something's got to change. My end goal needs to be a perfectly recorded high production podcast and I'm not getting that right now. And so I'm exploring other podcast studios or I'm going to look at other podcast studios or maybe I'm considering purchasing my own equipment and building out a studio at home. There are many different ways that I can then take inspired action to go and change my reality. Again, for all of us, they're going to be different. And if you are feeling like you have a bit of friction in an area of your life or maybe your job's not feeling good or your relationship's not feeling good or your friendships aren't feeling good or your work-life balance isn't good or something is not feeling good, do this activity and figure out what little steps you can take to get you where you want to be. And so I think I will share some examples of what I manifested. I can tell you the story of Franklin. I don't think I've told it. So Franklin, my little darling angel, I got him in 2015. No, maybe 2018. Anyway, 2018. I got Franklin in 2018. And the first time I ever realized I wanted a sausage dog was when I was in Paris. I was holding this little sausage dog. He was so cute. And I realized then this is going to be my dog. Like I'm going to have one one day. Anyway, I moved to Sydney. I realized pretty quickly that I was going to stay. I realized that I was very lonely and I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a dog. And so what I had done was I set the dog that I wanted, which was a chocolate dash hound, a chocolate, a chocolate and tan or a black and tan one as my phone background. I actually set it as my phone background. Every day I would look in Facebook groups and I would say to myself, how can I get this dog? Like, I really want this dog. And it's funny because I'm going to hold up my phone now. You can see Franklin is actually my background. The picture that I had on my phone at that time was a real life sausage dog so it wasn't a cartoon like my background that's still him by the way but I was looking for a dog and there were just none available when I wanted but one day I remember I was on the train home from work I got on at Wynyard I think and I was catching it back to Chatswood I was living in Sydney and I'm scrolling in this Facebook group and this is when you could sell dogs on on Facebook right you you can't do that now I think it's illegal because of scammers and shit I'm scrolling and I see this post of two chocolate sausage dogs that had just been born they would be available on June June 1st, keep that in mind because this is a very important part of the story. I immediately messaged the owner. Her name's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. I don't think you listen to my podcast, but Wendy and I are friends now. And I immediately messaged her because I see June 1st as the date that these dogs are available. And I also see their date of birth, which is the 26th of March. I just got goosebumps because for those of you who do know, my birthday is also on the 26th of March. Obviously, I'm a bit older than Franklin, but he had the same fucking birthday. I was like, this is my dog. Like, I just knew I needed this dog. So I message this lady no questions asked I was like I need this dog which one's available and she goes oh they're actually both available you can pick which one you want she said you can FaceTime me if you would like and I can show you them because she was in Mudgee and I was in Chatswood Mudgee and Chatswood are very far away and so I FaceTime Wendy she shows me these two dogs I picked the smallest one because he was really small and he also had a kink in his tail and I said that's my Franklin and I think she was calling him Fredo at that time lo and behold I ended up staying in Sydney and I signed the lease to move into my apartment on June 1st and the way that this situation fucking worked out it was so perfect guys I truly believe that I manifested it some of you might be listening and think no that's just a coincidence but I truly believe I manifested it because what I did was I moved in on June 1st and then the next day I drove to go pick up this dog and I went with my friend Nancy and we went together him and he was a tiny little angel. I literally moved house, picked up a dog in the, in the same 48 hours. Psychotic, I know, but I would do it again because I love that dog with my life. But anyway, what I did was I truly believed that I was going to get this dog and I had just set him as my phone background. I took the aligned action, continually scrolling, continually checking. I was calling all the all the dog adverts or all the dog people. Some of them were scammers, but I eventually got my little Franklin. And for me, that's my biggest manifesting success. And then some other examples, I also told you in the Lucky Girl syndrome about my old job, how I manifested that. I won't repeat it. Go back and listen to that episode if you want to. And then other ways that I feel like I've manifested money or abundance are very small ways where I've either gotten a random pay rise or I've gotten random bonuses. One example, and I'm going to give it to you, which blew my mind is it was about a year ago. I got told that I was eligible to go into a class action for something that ANZ had done many years ago. It was when I had a loan with them. Anyway, it's with Slater and Gore. 
Gordon and I'm still in that class action and I am actually going to get a payout from that class action in the middle of this year. I don't think the payout is that much money. I think it's a couple of hundred dollars. I know that a couple hundred dollars is a lot of money, but it's not like I'm getting a 50 grand payout. No, guys, I think it's like 200 or 300 dollars. But in my mind, I'm like, that's just that doesn't surprise me because I'm like, of course, of course, I'm going to get that payout because I feel like I manifest or I attract abundance in that way naturally anyway. And whether it's the girl at Messina giving me the free ice cream or whether it's finding money on the ground or whether it's someone giving me a discount on something. I can't explain how these things happen. But with these, I feel like it's not so much the aligned action because I can't really take aligned action with that. It's more the limiting beliefs. And again, it goes back to that science part of it. It's like, well, if I think I'm going to attract money or if I think I'm abundant in life, of course, I'm then going to go and see those examples. Again, these are not things that just happened overnight. These are consciously chosen thoughts or consciously chosen behaviors. Another example is my property. So I wrote down and I actually wrote it down in my journal. I was manifesting for a property that was $600,000 in a certain suburb of Melbourne and I wanted to have good lighting and that was my requirement. And I went and looked at so many properties. I put in offers at places. I didn't succeed. And then I ended up purchasing my property for $605,000. So it was $5,000 over what I was manifesting. It was in the area that I wanted within the radius of the city. It has natural lighting. And again, that's another example of how I manifested something. I want to also say, I don't believe that for me anyway, you can manifest things to do with health, like to cure illness or things like that. I've seen some people claim they've manifested pregnancies and manifested health. And I think that is a very dangerous line to cross. I also don't think that you can manifest people. I see people saying that you can manifest your ex-boyfriend back. Fucking no, I'm not about that on this podcast. And there are just other things in life where they are unfortunate and there is no way to like manifest around it. And I want to just mention that as well, because again, back to what I said at the start, it would be very naive and very dangerous of me not. And I want to just give you guys the facts and I want to give you guys practical ways that you can then go and implement this. But also come in the group and share with me your examples, examples where you have manifested something into your life. But guys, we are now going to jump into the listener questions. So I've got three and we're going to rattle them off. So question number one is how do you avoid turning manifesting into an obsessive thought process? And I feel like I kind of touched on this, but I want to touch on it again, because as I said, it is a slippery slope. And I feel like if you're waking up every day and you're obsessing over manifesting things, it can be a very dangerous reality to live in. And that's why when I gave you my tips, the last tip is really just to like let it go and really just focus on if you're already taking the action, then just know in your heart and know in your mind that like that is enough and that is absolutely all that you can do. And I think it would be again about practicing that balance because life is still there to be lived. There are things that are going to still happen in life. There are things that are going to happen that are out of our control and there are things that are unfortunate and negative and bad as well that we will experience. And so I think if you can just maintain that balance and know when to like dip in and dip out of it and also giving yourself a chance to practice it or lean into it at a set time. So like I said to you, this is not something I I wake up and do every day. It might be something I do a couple times a year. Maybe I do it. Maybe it's not every month. I do my monthly review in a way every month. So I guess it's kind of tied into that. But like I said, for me, I just take stock take of how I'm acting and my behavior. And if I need to make adjustments or if I've got any like pressure points in my life, that's when I know I probably need to have a look inward and see what it is. But aside from that, I try to just enjoy and live in the moment and live in the present. And I would say the other element of how to avoid it turning into obsessive is to practice gratitude too, because gratitude keeps you thankful for what you've already got. And I also think that that is a part in manifesting too. Question number two, is trying to manifest a specific person bad? And I touched on this a moment ago. My question would be, why would you want to manifest somebody who doesn't want to be with you. And it's almost like I've had many, many of you ask me, how can I manifest my boyfriend back? Or how can I manifest my ex back? And my advice to you would be to work on your beliefs about yourself and work on your self-compassion and self-confidence first. Because I would argue that if you do that, you will get yourself to a point where you will say, hang on a minute, I don't even want to manifest this guy back because he's not the guy for me. I don't want to be with somebody that doesn't
doesn't want to be with me. And so I personally am not the creator or I'm not the podcaster to tell you that, yes, you can go and manifest your ex. I'm not going to say that. I'm also not going to say that it's bad because I know that people out there preach that and preach that they can help you manifest the person that you want back. Again, I think it's a very dangerous line. My argument would be focus on your healing and again, letting go and knowing that if you are meant to be, then you will be and you will come back to each other and just letting it go, working on yourself, healing from the relationship, leveling up and then seeing, is this person even someone I want to be with? Because I'm going to tell you nine times out of 10, you'll heal and you'll get to that point and you'll be like, hang on, this isn't even what I want. This person is not what I want. Don't manifest a specific person. Manifest to heal. Manifest to move forward. Manifest a new life with a partner who has all of the qualities that you want. And just quickly on that, I think you can be a little bit broad in like manifesting a partner. This person said specific person. So I'm thinking it's either their ex or somebody. So let's just give an example. We'll use we'll use Josh. We'll use a J name. So I'm not going to go and manifest Josh, but I might be trying to manifest a boyfriend or a partner that has all these qualities. And I did this activity not that long ago, actually. I personally wouldn't want to manifest for Josh himself. The way that I think manifesting a person is okay, it's not even manifesting a person. It's manifesting the traits in a person. So we're not manifesting for someone specific. We're manifesting traits or qualities in somebody. Because I have done this in past relationships or even now where like I have a list of things that I want in my dream partner or a list of things that I don't want in my dream partner. And I would argue that that's not a specific person. That's the traits. And so that's where the line can be quite blurred and where I would say (laughs) manifesting for the traits, but I don't back the manifesting for Josh or any other specific ex-boyfriend. And then the last question is dealing with negative self-talk when my manifesting isn't working. And what I want to say here is how do you know it's not working? Part of my tip is to trust and let it go. If you are doing the action, it's working. You just can't see it yet. If you are having the negative self-talk, that is where in tip two, you're clearing those limiting beliefs. You're rewriting them in a way that feels better and sounds better. And then you're practicing telling those to yourself. As I said, it does take time, but I feel like if you do the steps in the way that I gave them to you, it can help you iron out those limiting beliefs straight away and help you rewire those thoughts over time. And then just trusting that it is working. Right now, I have a list of things that, yeah, I'm manifesting, but I would also say I'm just working towards those things. And some of those things may take longer than the next, but it doesn't mean they're not going to happen. Patience is also a large part of it too. But I would always argue, and I've said it so many times in this podcast, if you are taking the action, that is all you can do. That is enough. Give yourself the time to attract it. Give yourself the time to work towards it. Give yourself the time to get there because you absolutely will. And so we're going to wrap the show there. I'm going to head off and get some lunch. I think I'm going for dumplings now with an old friend of mine well, my old, old boss, which I'm very excited about. It's not for work related stuff, by the way. We're just catching up as friends. But yeah, I'm excited because I'm really hungry. My stomach's been rumbling this whole entire time. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, listen to the Lucky Girl Syndrome one. It's got similar vibes. There will be an abundance mindset coming soon. I will leave the voting to you guys in the Facebook group. Have a great week ahead. I hope something magical happens to you. I hope that you do something kind for yourself. I hope that you do something fun for yourself. I hope that, yeah, you do a bit of self-care. Hope that you come in the Facebook group. Join us if you're not. It's your safe space podcast community. It's your safe space podcast community. You can tell that I'm getting tongue-tied. I'm at the end of two episodes that I've recorded today. And if you're not already, please follow us on Instagram, your safe space pod or Adele Marie. That's my Instagram. So come and follow me there if you're not. And if you haven't, please leave me a review on Apple or a rating on Spotify. Even if you have, leave me another one. It goes so far when you reshare the podcast on your story or you leave me a review. Podcasts do not have an algorithm, unfortunately. I think that's why I got so frustrated with the audio situation because it messes up the video and then I can't use the video to promote the podcast. So it's all intertwined. And so I would really appreciate any support that you could give me, whether that's a reshare or a review or a rating. It goes a long way and you help keep the podcast alive. But thank you so much for joining me. I love you. Big kisses. I will see you next time. Bye, guys. I'm leaving an extra little note in here because if this audio fucks up, I may lose my shit, but hopefully it won't, guys. All right. Love you. See ya.